Good to have this young man in as our special guest. Uh, when your old man is Stephen and your grandfather is Sergio, there's some pressure on you when you wander down to the Carlton Footy Club. But he's handled himself beautifully and he's flourished in the last couple of years. His name's Jack Silvani. He's on the couch. Welcome, Jack. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Uh, this, is, um, this is the Carlton Footy Club that you would have known as a young kid when you're dagging around behind your old man when they just keep winning for fun. Then you went through a really tough period and now you've emerged. You must be enjoying your footy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a kid, I was uh, I was probably starved of success a bit. I was um, probably a bit young to remember These 99. Pictures. Yeah, uh, 99 when we last played in a grand final, and um, the rest after that was was a um, bit a bit downhill. But uh, to see the crowd uh, out in, in full support and uh, to hear how loud they are, it's it's the Carlton of old, and it's it's pretty exciting. When we see those pictures, I mean, they're they're, they're pretty right. awesome. We've all, we've all got boys, and to to think that they'd follow in your footsteps mm. one day would be pretty cool. But do you always feel like, you know, is is that always what you wanted to do, and that was ordained in you your future that you're going to be a Carlton player? Yeah, it was it was all I grew up with, so um, it's always what I what I wanted to do, and. I've got a pleasant reminder on my locker as I walk in um, what I'm following in and I was really close with Andrew Walker as well when he was there he handed the number over to me so um, yeah it, it is a dream and I'm, I'm very uh, very lucky to be able to live it out. I think you're doing remar remarkably well mate so all credit to what you've been able to build. Thank you. I get the sense that you'll be you'll never really be really comfortable though that the, the experiences that you've had in your career to date that you just play with such hunger and that that is going to be ingrained in you now you do you, you surely you feel like you belong but you still you've got to fight for it every day yeah i think so and um i guess plugging holes uh, like i am at the moment in the ruck and uh, and whatnot is um will will hold me in good stead and, and probably does relate to that hunger that you mentioned um I'm obviously not a first choice ruckman, giving away <laughs> 15 centimetres and probably nah. 15 kilos as well. So um, it's hard work in there, and, but I've, I've just got to scrap and um, it's something I enjoy doing. And yeah, I, I think if I can sort of continue to play the, the rest of my career that way, it'll, um, yeah, it'll all look after itself. Has your perception of football changed this year? Because you're into your seventh season, but your first six seasons, you're, playing, you're only playing 22 wins. You haven't played in a final and so but the version of your career and, and what the club is about this year is is so much different do you feel like now you're at a point with your footy and where the team's at that you think oh this is this is what footy at the Carlton Football Club's all about yeah I think so and um, I was lucky that I, I, I grew up with the history of the club so I knew how proud it was and how big it was and um, what it meant to to all the supporters but now to be a part of that and giving back to them as well um, giving back to what they've missed out on for so long is is probably something I'm, I'm most proud of. The forward line works really well you have know, got a couple of big units in in uh, Mackay and Kerno. Um, you slot in there as a third forward more often than not you've got a lot of small blokes that put a lot of pressure on and are dangerous what's your role in that as a leader? Um, oh, I think for me it's I'm, I'm probably that link man I'm, I'm the one who gets um, who is allowed to play with a bit more freedom and get up and back and use my run. Um, I'm, I'm probably not quite tall enough to be categorised as a tall and not mm. quite small enough to be your stock small. So um, I'm sort of that in-between sort of hybrid. But, um, yeah, for me, uh, myself, uh, Harry and, and Charlie were probably the, the three um, who have played the most footy down there. So being able to bring the guys together um, during the week and, and during the game and sort of give the calming word and um, instruction out on the ground is sort of where, where we fit in and yeah, where, we're, where we're able to do our best work. In between, aren't we? just hit a back-to-back -back and he's got me by an inch. Yeah, he's taller than And he classifies yeah. himself as an in-betweener. <laughs> We've got it here. Um, it, it, it's all good now, but it wasn't as easy as this, was it? I mean, you went through... The club went through some really tough times. Your old man got him broad and immersed in it, I think, and we're all sausage, sausage men here, so we're in his camp. Um, and then, you know, you, you had to try and find your way, and there were times where it looked like maybe you are going to get spat out of the club. So there were some difficult times for you. Yeah, there was, and, um, and my form probably wasn't at, the, at where I wanted it to be, and I was in and out of the side, and um, I was probably at a bit of a loss with how I was applying myself um, and, and where I best fit. Um, but I think, as Buck's touched on before, sort of getting back to that hunger and the nitty-gritty stuff, and if you base your game off that rather than sort of 
um, stats, it's it's an easier thing to measure because, you know, a lot of the time the outside world can sort of get caught up in, in all the pretty numbers, but at the end of the day, it's what goes on inside the four walls of your club and, and what's valued inside there. And um, personally, that's that's something I sort of can hang my hat on now. How about the dynamic, though, when, when sort of Dad left the club? And it wasn't really an acrimonious split. How awkward was that for you to, to, to sort of be left behind and, and some of the relationships, you know, were, were, were part of the decision for Dad to no longer be at the club? Yeah, well, when Dad was there, we he sort of stayed upstairs and I was downstairs and he said it helped in all his decision making. He didn't sort of get close to any of the players and I think he'd made that quite aware to sort of everyone at the club. But um, for me, I was, I was in the side at the time and... I was just able to sort of put my head down and focus on my footy and train hard and um, yeah that's sort of what it got back to there were there were conversations that were had but I don't think it's really a situation that'll probably ever happen again um, in the AFL so you know you can sort of take learnings from it all you want but I, I don't know unless dad decides to come back it probably won't happen <laughs> again. The, um, the energy and connection of the team is obvious um, what's the coach brought to the table? I think it's been evident this year we're, we're playing um, a more balanced style of footy. Um, our defence has is, is started to stack up pretty well um, and we're playing with, with some freedom on, on offence and um, I think we look back not so much this week gone by but the week before where we probably played our best game uh, for the year against Freo, we were really tough at the contest and um, used the ball in a way that we were able to sort of progress it forward and um, and it, and. And, uh, and worked in our favour. So, um, I mean, basing it off our contests and our defence and then being able to, able to attack off that is sort of where we see it. How far can you go? How far can you go this year? You played 92 games, seven will take you to 99 at the end of the home and away and then finals, maybe, if you're there. What, what's the ceiling? It's all one week at a time, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think, and everyone's touched on it, but we, we chase us and, and the level that we want to play. and. On the weekend, on the weekend, we were probably a little bit off that. Uh, the week before, we were we were right on that. So um, I think if we can get back to that level that we we played at against Freo, that'll uh, hold us in good stead. So, so on that, quickly, a couple of weeks ago, Vossi had a real crack at you, three quarter time, and the, I think the the message was around, you know, coming back to your own standards and, and going under that. Is, that's obviously a real important part of your mentality and the the conversations you have internally. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's what our reviews are, are based off a lot, and um, you know, there's we've got KPIs that we we stand by, and um, like like every club, you want to you want to you obviously scout the opposition, but you want to play to the level that you expect of yourselves, and um, we, we've done that for the most part of this year. So if we can keep doing that, we'll be we'll be okay. Hey mate, we're, we're unabashed fans. We love what you've been able to do. We're enjoying the ride for the Carlton Footy Club, but you're rolling amongst it, given how hard you've had to work. Is your old man going to crack a smile at any stage when he's watching you or not? Probably not. No, no I said he hard does. taskmaster. <laughs> he is. He is a hard taskmaster. So. Um, maybe, maybe if we uh, go a little further, we might say one. Hey, we just wanted to get you and have a chat, man. It's, we appreciate it, and we, as I said, we, we love blokes who try. Yep. It's not a very sexy word, try, but there's few that try harder, and we're enjoying your success. So love thanks the way for coming you go about in. It. Thank you. Thanks, right. guys. Jack Silvani with us.